We are following breaking news at this hour out of Russia, nearly 10 months after her arrest and incarceration there. WNBA star Brittany Griner is headed home. Yeah, breaking and welcome news. Russia has agreed to a prisoner swap with the U.S. We're going to go straight to NBC's chief foreign affairs correspondent, Andrea Mitchell. She has these breaking details. Andrea, what can you tell us? Good morning, Savannah and Hoda. Well, according to a senior administration official, Brittany Griner is free after 294 days in Russian captivity. The last month spent in one of Russia's notoriously harsh penal colonies. She was traded for Russian arms dealer Viktor Boot, who Vladimir Putin has been trying to get back, and who had served 11 years of a 25-year sentence in the U.S. President Biden signed off on the trade, even though it meant leaving another American businessman, Paul Whelan, behind bars in Russia. Over the weekend, Secretary of State Antony Blinken saying the U.S. has been actively engaged in discussions with Russia about a possible prisoner swap to free Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan. We have to see if uh, the engagements that we've had, the discussions that we have, produce an actual result. Griner, the 32-year-old WNBA superstar, has spent nearly 10 months in Russian custody. Arrested at a Moscow airport in February, she admitted to bringing less than a gram of medicinal cannabis into the country, but said she never intended to break any law. Her plight sparked an outpouring from her family, teammates, and fans. Griner's wife, Sherelle. I'm frustrated that my wife is not going to get justice. I know you all are frustrated, too. That's why you're here. Sentenced to nine years in prison, Griner appealed, pleading for leniency from behind bars. This has been a very traumatic um, experience waiting for this day. But she was denied. Day. President Biden last month. I'm telling you, I am determined to get her home and get her home safely, along with others, I might add. The other American held by Russia will not be coming home. Paul Whelan, a former Marine, a businessman, detained four years ago, is serving a 16-year prison sentence after being accused of spying, which the U.S. strongly denies. Whelan's family later raised concerns about his safety, which I asked the Secretary of State about last week. We're working to bring him home, uh, to bring Brittany uh, Griner home. But this is, again, uh, what we see Russia doing in terms of abusing the very basic understandings that countries have had uh, when it comes to uh, having access to uh, our citizens who are being detained. Those familiar with these very hard negotiations say that the Russians absolutely refuse to release Paul Whelan without getting a Russian spy in return. But the U.S. insists it does not have any Russian spies in U.S. custody. So the administration says it had no one to trade to meet that Russian demand. And again, the U.S. maintains that Paul Whelan is wrongfully detained. He's a businessman, not a spy. And just now we also got a statement from the group, that group that has been campaigning for all of these, all of these hostages to be released from all over the world, actually, saying Paul Whelan has been let down and left behind by at least three times by two American presidents. He deserves better from his government, and our campaign implores President Biden to urgently secure Paul's immediate return using all tools available. Mm. We understand the president will be speaking uh, shortly or yeah. later this morning. Yeah, Andrew, thank you very much. The breaking news, Brittany mm -hmm. Griner has been freed. Mm -hmm. Paul Whelan left behind. Let's uh, go to Chief White House correspondent Peter Alexander at the White House. What's the word there, Peter? Savannah, we do expect uh, to hear from President Biden at 8.30, so 15 minutes from now. And we have just learned that Sherelle Griner, Brittany Griner's wife, is right now in the Oval Office here at the White House. She is behind closed doors with the president. The two of them were able to speak by phone earlier this morning with Brittany Griner after uh, she was returned to U.S. custody. And then, as we understand it, Sherelle was able to have a private conversation with her wife, Brittany, from the president's study. But this uh, concludes for the Griner family what has just been a very distressing situation over the course of the last 10 months. The president has said this was a top priority. Uh, he had exchanged a letter with Griner in the past who wrote him over the summer saying that she was terrified she would be there forever in Russian custody. The good news this morning that the White House will certainly be celebrating today is the release of Brittany Griner. And again, to repeat, Sherelle Griner, the president, uh, is in the Oval Office with the president 
right now and had an opportunity to speak alongside the president with her wife just this morning. Savannah Hoda. All right, Peter Alexander, thank you so much. We are going to continue to keep a close eye on the story all morning long. We're going to bring you updates. And of course, we'll have coverage on NBC Nightly News and all day on NBC News Now. For now, many of our stations will return to the Today Show in New York. This is Savannah Guthrie and Hoda Kotb. Good day. We're going to continue our breaking news coverage of that story you saw just there. Brittany Griner, after nearly 300 days in Russian captivity, is free, an exchange that took place in the United Arab Emirates earlier today. Her wife, Sherelle, is now at the White House right now, awaiting Brittany Griner's return to America. Yeah, it was a prisoner swap with Russian arms dealer Victor Boot, but it notably leaves behind another American, Paul Whelan, a businessman who's being held on a 16-year sentence on spying charges. Let's bring in Molly Hunter, who's also following this for us. Yeah, Molly, so we know that the U.S. has been actively working to release her from custody since she was arrested in February. We know there's been talk of this trade basically since this summer. What more are we learning about this release, how did it ultimately all come together? Yeah, and a lot of those details, of course, we will be expecting to learn from the White House, from the State Department, when we hear, of course, from officials and President Biden uh, later today, hopefully, uh, some of the intricacies of the actual swap. All we know right now is that uh, Brittany Griner went through the UAE. Uh, we did understand uh, that this has been agreed uh, at least for several days. We've heard, of course, Secretary of State Blinken over the weekend saying that negotiations uh, were being done at the top levels, uh, were being pushed forward very carefully. Um, but but really, as far as details, exactly, you know, what kind of plane, who exactly was with her, uh, all of those details we are expecting to learn later today. I think the big headline that we uh, learned today, and you just heard Andrea Mitchell and, of course, uh, Peter Alexander talk about this, is that Paul Whelan, uh, Whelan excuse me, uh, is being left behind. And that is something that President Biden has been talking about all year, is that these were both, both of these Americans were priorities for him. Uh, and Paul Whelan, uh, according to Andrea Mitchell's reporting, uh, is being left behind because the Russians uh, had apparently refused to release Paul without getting a Russian spy uh, in return. Now, according to Andrea <laughs> Mitchell's reporting, the U.S. insisted that it doesn't have any Russian spies and it could not actually match that. But that is, again, something that we will hopefully be learning uh, a lot more about as the day goes. But there are now two American families who are hoping uh, for good news. And, of course, Brittany Griner's mm -hmm. family uh, and her wife uh, is getting that good news today. Yeah, her wife we hear is actually with the president and had heard in this private phone call uh, from her wife, but also we heard from those supporting Paul Whelan who said he, he's been let down three times and by two American presidents, as you mentioned, obviously, something that is heartbreaking for that family. Um, Molly, let's talk about what happens next. As Joe mentioned at the top of this, this swap happened in the United Arab Emirates. What now? How soon can we expect her back home in the States? Do we have any idea and will we hear from her? We do not. And again, I think all of these details are being uh, held and kept very, very closely uh, to the White House until Brittany Griner is actually uh, back in America, exactly what time she lands or where exactly she is going to uh, come back. Of course, as we understand, her wife is in Washington uh, at the White House. Whether or not she is coming into Washington, uh, we really do not know. Uh, we do know that she went through the United Arab Emirates. Uh, but right now, you guys, exactly how far away she is from home, uh, given the fact that we have now been able to report this information, though, uh, of course, the assumption is, is that she is safe and that this is actually, of course, uh, in the clear that this is definitely happening, that she is definitely coming home. Uh, but exactly when, uh, you guys, we are just not going to know until we actually hear some confirmation from the White House. And no doubt they're keeping that information close to their best right now. Just to kind of recap where we've gone, really, this is something that started in February. The news really didn't surface until March. But, but Brittany Griner, of course, played for a team in Russia. She was at the airport there. That's when she was arrested, accused of mm -hmm. possessing cannabis in used vape cartridges. Uh, she ended up pleading guilty to that in July, but said there was no intent. As Andrea just reported, it was less than one gram. She wrote a note to the president earlier this year saying, I'm terrified I might be here forever. She said, I voted for you. I believe in you. I miss my wife. I miss my family. I miss my teammates. Hearing those words that she wrote a few months ago, really powerful when you consider that she is going to be re reuniting with those people here mm -hmm. very soon. But then on the flip side, we've been talking about Paul Whelan, a U.S. citizen, a businessman. He was detained in Moscow at a hotel in 2018, accused of spying, something he has denied. He was convicted and sentenced in 2020 to 16 years, so he is still very early in his sentence. Uh, Molly, do you expect that there's going to be a lot of questions to the Biden administration about the fact that Paul Whelan has not been released yet? 
absolutely huge questions, and, and no doubt that will be a big question, of course, from Paul Whelan's family as well. Um, Joe, just picking up on that timeline, one of the very interesting things, you know, you covered the first couple of months um, of her detention and of that trial. Um, we covered her appeal just back in October, and that is when we saw Brittany Griner. Uh, she was not actually in the courtroom for her appeal. Her lawyers were in that courtroom, uh, but she joined via video link. She was behind a cage, which we have seen her in. And she was looking um, exhausted. She was looking uh, miserable, according to her lawyers. She was uh, not in good spirits. She was holding on to those bars. And we watched the whole appeal. She was holding on to the bars, making an appeal to the court. And that appeal was denied just as recently as October. And you have to imagine that given that we are in early December right now, negotiations were going very strongly even back then. And at the time, they talked a lot about intent. They talked about how she never uh, intended to uh, be smuggling anything like drugs. She didn't intend to break any rules. This is a woman who spent a lot of time in Russia, who played for a Russian team, who made a lot of money in Russia, who had teammates, who had friends, who contributed a lot to that country and spent a lot of time going in and out of that airport. She would have known the rules. Um, but listening to that appeal and then that rejection was a huge blow, both for her lawyers, for her wife, uh, and for her. She was then sent to a penal colony, and we just learned about that exactly uh, about a month ago. She was uh, sent... It was called Female Penal Colony IK2. And the treatment in these penal colonies uh, that has been reported um, by human rights groups, um, by people who have been released from these penal colonies, is um, horrendous. Uh, we're talking 10, 12, 14 hours of hard labor, very little food, no breaks. And so the idea that she was going to spend uh, the next eight years, because she's already spent kind of 10 years, so the sentence as she went into the penal colony was eight more years, was pretty extraordinary. Now, going back to her trial as well, the maximum sentence that she could have gotten uh, was 10 years. She was given nine years. And again, this was really part of her appeal that this was just extraordinary that she got almost the maximum sentence, you guys. All right, Molly, thank you so much. Stay tuned. We'll check back in with you throughout the morning here. Mm -hmm. Let's get more on this breaking news, though, with our NBC News Chief White House correspondent, Peter Alexander. Peter, good to have you with us on this breaking news. So we do understand the president is going to deliver remarks quite soon here. Tell us what the latest is from the White House here. And also, as we were just discussing with Molly, I mean, what we can expect in terms of questions about what happened here for Paul Whelan. Yeah, I think let's start with Brittany Griner, of course, and that is a, a huge achievement for this White House that has been very focused over the course of these last 10 months on securing the release of Brittany Griner, the president describing it as unacceptable, uh, the wrongful detention of both Griner and Paul Whelan. What we know within the last few minutes is from the president. He now has posted a tweet saying that he just had a chance to speak to Brittany Griner. He posted alongside it a picture of Griner's wife, Sherelle Griner, there alongside the vice president, Kamala Harris, and the secretary, secretary of state, Tony Blinken, speaking to Griner by phone this morning, writing, she is safe, she is on a plane, she is on her way home. That conversation took place, as we understand it, inside the Oval Office. And then separately, Sherelle Griner, Brittany Griner's wife, was given time to have a private conversation with her wife from the president's study. So that's what's been happening behind closed doors right now as we speak. The next question, I think, will be exactly where Griner goes when she comes back to the United States. Would she go to Andrews, Joint Base Andrews, here just outside Washington, D.C., perhaps to Dover, Dover Air Force Base, or potentially to San Antonio, Texas, where oftentimes uh, when Americans come home from overseas after times of detention, and you'll excuse the beeping behind us as we we have some construction clearly happening here at the White House. They would go to San Antonio uh, and be treated at a, med a military medical facility there to make sure that they are well. We had heard from Sherelle Grider in the course of the last several months saying of her wife that she described her as being, quote, physically weak, but that she wasn't having any mental health issues. You can imagine just how um, distressing that entire experience must have been for Brittany, uh, Brittany Griner behind uh, behind bars there, as you witness, even in a cage during some of uh, her court hearings that took place. She is a lesbian woman, six foot nine, someone who's used to regular activity, to staying physically fit, an eight-time WNBA All-Star, a two-time Olympic gold medalist, but was basically held uh, captive for so long, most recently in a penal colony outside of Moscow. Mm -hmm. As for Paul Whelan now, we will have an opportunity to hear from the president, who will likely detail the circumstances surrounding him as well. It's a cement truck, just to make things interesting on this day. <laughs> so I think the question is going to be about Paul Whelan, who, of course, was a former U.S. Marine, 
this was a this was a big swap for the United States, giving up a convicted arms dealer, Victor Boot, who was known as the Merchant of Death in exchange for Brittany Griner. In the past, the U.S. had uh, expressed privately a desire to have a two-for-one trade. Russia uh, initially was not accepting of that. They had said, we are told that they wanted there to be multiple Russian individuals returned in exchange for Griner and Whelan were that to happen. But at the end of the day, as we know, it is a one-for-one -one trade, and we expect in the course of the next several hours that Brittany Griner will be back on U.S. soil. Peter, Jones does it down. seem like that was always the issue here, that, that, that it was because they didn't have a second person to offer, it was going to be hard to get Paul Whelan back into the States? Well, there were other people that the Russians had appeared to suggest be released, including a, a convicted Russian, uh, someone who, who was, had been convicted of, of a brutal killing, who I think was detained uh, in Germany or is detained in Germany right now. I think what we had heard, at least from the president, who spoke in that news conference after uh, the midterms just about a month ago, almost exactly a month ago, Joe and Savannah, was that he said that after the midterms were behind them, he was hoping that Russia would be more serious in terms of its conversations about a potential swap here. The president, as you remember, I mean, obviously, Griner had sort of become this, this pawn. She was detained uh, on February 17th, one week before Russia invaded Ukraine. So the timing could not have been worse as she ultimately became sort of a political pawn in this entire situation. But the good news, the dramatically exciting and thrilling news for the Grinder family, certainly, and for so many Americans who have been worried about her, is that Brittany Grinder is now on her way home. Certainly a big relief to them. Peter Alexander, thank you so much for your reporting and for powering through the backward driving cement truck there. We yeah, appreciate well, it. Like you said, what a morning going on there. <laughs> All right, Peter, thank you very much. All right, let's go back to NBC's Molly Hunter, who, oh, actually, we have NBC White House correspondent Carol Lee with us. Uh, we are actually going to go to Molly Hunter. That is a picture of Carol Lee. <laughs> we are correct there, but she cannot hear us. Um, Molly, we understand that you actually have a statement now from Russians. Hopefully you can hear us. You have a statement from Russia. Tell us what we know. Yeah, Savannah, we did. Um, our team in Russia in Moscow just got a statement from the Russian foreign ministry. Uh, I'm just reading it for the first time now. It says, on December 8th, the procedure for exchanging Russian citizen Victor Boot for U.S. citizen Brittany Griner, who served their sentences in correctional institutions of the United States of America and the Russian Federation, respectively, uh, was successfully completed at Abu Dhabi Airport. That is uh, the first uh, mention of a specific airport that we have gotten. We do not have those details uh, from the U.S. side yet. Uh, the statement continues. It says, for a long time, the Russian Federation has been negotiating with the United States on the release of boot. Um, it continues to say Washington categorically refused to engage in dialogue on the inclusion of the Russian in the exchange scheme. Nevertheless, the Russian Federation continued to actively work to rescue our compatriot. Uh, it continues. It says the Russian citizen has been returned to his homeland. So that would suggest that Victor Boot has already landed uh, on Russian soil in Russia. Of course, we are still waiting uh, for the news of where exactly uh, Brittany Griner is going to return to in the U.S. Yeah, right. exactly. According to the president, she is safe and she is on a plane on her way home. But yes, we don't know exactly where she'll land yet. Molly Hunter, thank you so much. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back on this breaking news. Looking live at the White House right now, where we are expecting to hear from President Biden at any moment to talk about the fact that Brittany Griner, WNBA star, has been released in a prisoner swap. The president tweeting moments ago that he has spoken to Brittany Griner, saying, quote, she is safe, she is on a plane, she is on her way home. We also know that Griner's wife, Sherelle, is at the White House and also had a private conversation with her wife. Yeah, we understand that conversation took place in the Oval Office, but this prisoner swap is, of course, big news. It was for Russian arms dealer Victor Boot, and it notably leaves behind American business man Paul Whelan, who is serving a sentence which he denies on charges of spying a 16-year sentence, which he's just early into right now. But we're hoping to hear from the president just moments away now and maybe get some information about where and when Brittany Griner will land. As we just heard from our Peter Alexander, it could potentially be Joint Base Andrews. It could potentially be in Texas, where oftentimes somebody will come home and have some type of medical evaluation there um, before ultimately she will, of course, be reunited with her wife. We had heard from her at one point in a letter to the president and seeing that she was worried she would be there forever. So, of course, this is going to be an emotional day for that family, as well as an emotional day for the Whelan family. We've heard from those supporting him that say that he's been let down three times and by two American presidents as we continue to understand exactly how this prisoner swap came to be. Brittany Griner has spent nearly 300 days in Russian custody. The last few weeks in a harsh penal colony there, 
She was arrested in February, accused of possessing cannabis-infused vape cartridges. Joining us now is Dr. Evelyn Farkas. She is former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Russia, Ukraine, and Eurasia, and former Senior Fellow at the Atlantic Council. Thank you so much for joining us. Just first off, what's your reaction to this big news this morning? Well, um, thanks for having me on. I'm also executive director of the McCain Institute, so my board would want me to say that. Um, my first reaction is obviously relief that she's released because her treatment in this penal colony would have been horrendous, and I'm sure we'll be hearing something from her about that at the right moment in time. In addition, of course, I'm also you know, disappointed, as I think most Americans would be, understanding the details and the fact that Paul Whelan's been held for over two years in Russian custody, that he wasn't released. Um, we had the impression, uh, at least from the outside, that the U.S. government was trying to get both Paul Whelan and Brittany Griner released in exchange for Victor Bout, the arms dealer, the Russian arms dealer, who we had been holding in custody for more than a decade. Unfortunately, it looks like that didn't happen. I would say if you, you have to put a silver lining on this, hopefully the Germans can help us out here in terms of getting Paul Whelan out, because they do have now two Russian citizens who are likely intelligence operators in their custody. And how would an arrangement like that work with us working with Germany to try to make that happen? I think we would obviously have to go to the Germans and seek their um, you know, their cooperation. And then obviously the Russians would have to agree that this is a this is a fair swap from their perspective. But they do have one person in custody who killed a Georgian um, who was seeking refuge in a Ge Georgian, meaning from the country of Georgia, <laughs> Republic of Georgia, seeking refuge in Germany. The, there was a Russian operative who assassinated that individual. And then just yesterday, when the Russians uncovered the scheme, I'm sorry, the Germans uncovered a scheme to overthrow their government, sort of similar to our January 6th attack, they rounded up a Russian citizen with the Germans who were plotting to overthrow the German government. And it's likely that that, that person was according to the media, helping the Germans who are trying to overthrow their government. So that person may also be a Russian operative. If that's the case, then the, if the Russians are claiming that Paul Whelan's a spy, so they want some, some intelligence operatives from their country in exchange for Paul Whelan. All right, Evelyn, stand by here. We want to go back to Molly Hunter, who's helping us with our coverage. Molly, I understand we're learning a little bit more about where Brittany Griner might be heading and yeah. also hearing reaction from the WNBA. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, so our chief White House correspondent, Kristen Welker, has just reported that from a senior administration official, Brittany Griner will fly to a medical facility in San Antonio where they will provide care and support for recently released people. It says we're flying Sherelle, of course, her wife, there to meet her. So we know that her wife, Sherelle, was in the Oval Office uh, and was with President Biden today, this morning, when she spoke with her wife. Uh, she will now fly to Texas uh, to meet with Brittany. Now, we are also getting reaction, as you might imagine, just really excited, positive, uh, overjoyed. Uh, her friends, her uh, players, her teammates, uh, WNBA stars. Uh, we've got Dee Dee Richards who says, oh my God, lots of G's. Thank you, God. We've got uh, Alicia Clark who says, chills. Oh my God. Don Stanley who says, God's grace is sufficient. Brittany Griner is home. I love you, BG. Look, and the, all the support is just pouring in. We are seeing these tweets come in. Brianna Turner says, thank you to all the government officials involved in securing her release. What unbelievable feelings. And of course, we should be getting reaction uh, from WNBA and from other organizations, of course, who have been so excited, so supportive. Um, of her release. Look, if Sherelle is flying to Texas uh, today, again, we do not know exactly when she will be landing, but hopefully, uh, you know, in the next few hours, we could see that kind of reunion. Absolutely. Uh, Evelyn, I want to bring you back in here. I mean, what does this tell you that's happening today? What does it say, if anything, about U.S.-Russian relations right now? Was this inevitable or was this always going to be an incredible challenge and something that may not have happened? You know, Joe, I think that this was inevitable in the sense that it was pretty obvious Two that minutes. Vladimir Putin really wanted Victor back, about back badly. <laughs> so that's a lot of bees. But they wanted this guy back. And so at some point, the Russians were going to make a deal. This is not as great a deal as what we wanted, but thank God Brittany Griner is now free. And quickly, before we go to this special report where the president will be speaking, what are you expecting and hoping to hear from the president? That he's going to continue to try to fight to get Paul Whelan out. 
and frankly, all Americans being held in custody around the world unlawfully. Do you do you feel like the process with Paul Whelan, the things you were discussing moments ago about working with other countries, that that is a process that is happening behind the scenes? I do. I do. I mean, I, I know some of the individuals who are at the highest levels here trying to free Americans around the world, and they're the types of people who don't give up, and they will pursue every possible angle. And the Germans just got us another person. You know, um, of course, they're not happy about this attempt to overthrow their government, but it did yield another Russian citizen, which could be helpful. What's the message that Brittany Griner's release sends to the world? Well, that if you're unlawfully detained and you're an American citizen, your government will fight to free you. All right. Dr. Evelyn Farkas, thank you so much for being with us on this. In just moments here, we are going to hear from the president again after WNBA star Brittany Griner has just been released in a prisoner swap. We know that she is on a plane headed to San Antonio, Texas, where she will be reunited with her wife. Let's head now to an NBC News special report. From NBC News, this is a special report. Here's Savannah Guthrie and Hoda Kotb. Hi, everybody. We continue to follow this breaking news out of Russia this morning. WNBA star Brittany Griner heading home, a prisoner swap. After 10 months, President Biden at the White House. Let's ago, listen. Standing together with her, Marshall, uh, in the Oval Office, I spoke with Brittany Griner. She's safe. She's on a plane. She's on her way home. After months of being unjustly detained in Russia, held under intolerable circumstances, Brittany will soon be back in the arms of her loved ones, and, uh, and she should have been there all along. This is a day we've worked toward for a long time. We never stopped pushing for her release. It took painstaking and intense negotiations, and I want to thank all the hardworking public servants across my administration who worked tirelessly to secure her release. I also want to thank the UAE for helping us facilitate Brittany's return, because that's where she landed. These past few months have been hell for Brittany and for Charlie and, uh, the, and her entire family and all her teammates back home. People all across the country have learned about Brittany's story, advocated for her release, stood with her through, throughout this terrible ordeal. And I know that support meant a lot to her family. I'm glad to be able to say that Brittany's in good spirits. She uh, she's relieved to finally be heading home. And the fact remains that she's lost months of her life, experienced the needless trauma, and she deserves space, privacy, and time with her loved ones to recover and heal from her time being wrongfully detained. Brittany is, uh, is an incomparable athlete, a two-time Olympic gold medalist for Team USA. She endured mistreatment and a show, at a, and a show trial in Russia with characteristic grit and incredible dignity. She represents the best America, best about America. It is across the board, everything about her. She wrote to me back in July. She didn't ask for special treatment, even though we've been working on a release from the day one. She requested a simple quote, please don't forget about me and the other American detainees. Please do all you can to bring us home. We never forgot about Brittany. We've not forgotten about Paul Whelan, who's been unjustly detained in Russia for years. This was not a choice of which American to bring home. We brought home Trevor Reed when we had a chance early this year. Sadly, for totally illegitimate reasons, Russia is treating Paul's case differently than Brittany's. And while we have not yet succeeded in securing Paul's release, we are not giving up. We will never give up. We remain in close touch with Paul's family, the Whelan family. And my thoughts and prayers are with them today. They have to have such mixed emotions today. And we'll keep negotiating in good faith for Paul's release. I guarantee that. I say that to the family. I guarantee you. And I urge Russia to do the same to ensure that Paul's health and, you, and humane treatment un, uh, are maintained until we can be able to bring him home. I don't want any American to sit wrongfully detained in, in one extra day if we can bring that person home. My administration has now brought home dozens of Americans who were wrongfully detained or held hostage abroad, many of whom had been held since before I took office. And today, we also remember the other Americans that are being held hostage and wrongfully detained in Russia or anywhere else in the world. Reuniting these Americans with their loved ones remains a priority. 
priority for my administration, every person in my administration involved in this. And we're going to continue to work to bring home every American who continues to endure such an injustice. We also want to prevent any more American families from suffering this pain and separation. And I strongly urge, I strongly urge all Americans to take precautions, including reviewing the State Department's travel advisories before they travel overseas, which now includes warnings about the risk of being wrongfully detained by a foreign government. Make no mistake about it, this work is not easy. Negotiations are always difficult. There are never any guarantees, but it's my job as President of the United States to make the hard calls and protect American citizens everywhere in the world, anywhere in the world. And I'm proud that today we have made one more family whole again. So welcome home, Brittany. And now I'd like to uh, uh, invite Sherelle to say a few words to you all. Of course, she's not excited at all about this. Sherelle, it's all yours, kiddo. Congratulations Thank again. You. Thank you. So over the last nine months, you all have been um, so privy to one of the darkest moments of my life. And so today I'm just standing here um, overwhelmed with emotions, but the most important emotion that I have right now is just sincere gratitude um, for President Biden and his entire administration. Um, he just mentioned this work is not easy and it has not been. There's been so many hands involved. And so I'd like to take a moment to just specifically mention a few. Uh, Vice President Harris, Secretary Blinken, Jake Sullivan, Joss Geltzer from the National Security Council, Roger Cartson and Fletcher, shown from the hostage envoys office. Um, a special thank you to Governor Richardson and Mickey, um, the Mercury players, the WNB PA for your advocacy. And also, um, you guys may not know this, but um, my family has been tremendously supported by the Washington um, agency, BG's agent, um, Lindsay Colas. It's just been amazing for me and my family throughout this process. So. Um, today, my family is whole, but as you all are aware, there's so many other families who are not whole. And so, BG's not here to say this, but I will gladly speak on her behalf and say that BG and I will remain committed to the work of getting every American home, including Paul, whose family is in our hearts today as we celebrate BG being home. We do understand that there are still people out here who are enduring what I endured the last nine months of missing tremendously their loved ones. So thank you everybody for your support. Um, and today it's just a happy day for me and my family. So um, I'm gonna smile right now. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. From the White House, President Biden, Vice President Harris, and Sherelle Greiner, the wife of Brittany Greiner, BG, who has just been freed from a Russian prison in a dramatic prisoner swap. But Paul Whelan, who often had been mentioned in the same breath as Brittany Greiner, uh, was not freed. And, and Sherelle Greiner right there saying she knows it's a moment of disappointment for his family, but um, she also smiled for the joy that she is feeling as well. Let's go to NBC's Chief White House Correspondent Peter Alexander with reaction there. Hey, Peter. Hey, Hoda and Savannah, good morning to you. We want to pull back the curtain a little bit about what we know happened already earlier this morning, as you just heard from the president. Earlier this morning, President Biden joined in the Oval Office by Sherelle Greiner, who you just heard from, as well as the Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, and the Vice President, Kamala Harris, who you see there, were able to speak with Brittany Greiner by phone. And then later, Sherelle Greiner, Brittany Greiner's wife, was able to have a private conversation by phone with her wife from the president's study. So the question now is, where does she go? Senior administration officials are telling NBC News that Brittany Griner is being flown to a military medical facility in San Antonio for care and treatment effectively to make sure that she is physically well and to check on her. You can imagine the mental and physical ordeal that Griner would have had over the course of nearly 10 months behind bars. She was there first detained February 17th of this year. We are told that Sherelle Griner will be 
flying to San Antonio, where she will have the first opportunity to greet her wife. But for the White House, this is a major diplomatic achievement. But as you note, it does come with some significant frustration, the inability to be able to get Paul Whalen home as well. Whalen, a U.S. businessman, a former U.S. Marine, remains detained in Russia. The U.S. says that his detention is unacceptable and that it is wrongful. And now for the first time, we are ha hearing from the family of Paul Whalen, his brother David Whalen, releasing a statement just moments ago celebrating the release of Brittany Griner, but saying, despite the possibility that there might be an exchange without Paul, our family is still devastated. I can't even fathom how Paul will feel when he learns. The exchange of Brittany Griner, we are told, came, according to U.S. officials, for a man by the name of Victor Boot, a convicted Russian arms dealer who had already served 14 years. He had seven years left on his uh, sentence. And it's a significant swap. This was a this was a stinging swap for the U.S. to have to make. We are told by senior officials here that the U.S. did everything in its power to try to bring Whalen home as well. But the Russians made it very clear that it was going to be Brittany Griner or no one. The U.S. continues to deny that Whalen was a spy, but his is an espionage, uh, espionage case. Savannah and Hodia, at this point, the Russians are not willing to turn Whalen over. Back to okay. you. And as, I mean, Victor Boot, as you mentioned, uh, um, obviously a convicted arms dealer referred to by some in the U.S. as a merchant of death. Wow. But it was his trade that secured the release of Brittany Griner this morning. Well, we're going to turn now to uh, NBC's chief foreign affairs correspondent, Andrea Mitchell, who broke this story earlier for us. Andrea, good morning. Good morning, uh, Hoda and Savannah. It is, as we say, bittersweet because Paul Whelan is not out, but you saw the joy on Sherelle Griner's face and her words uh, with Griner being out. And I think that it's really notable in this statement from David Whelan that he says that he is so glad that she's on her way home, that uh, as the family member of a hostage, an American hostage, he fully understands the joy of this and that the Biden administration made the right decision in bringing her home, validating the, the very tough decision that they had to make. And what a senior official just said to me is, we had no choice. The Russians, at the end of these negotiations where they were trying to figure out a second person because the Russians wanted what they called parity, two for two, but they wanted a spy, and the U.S. said, we don't have a spy in our custody, and so what they said was, according to the senior official, the choice was one, meaning Griner, or none, and they were prepared to cancel Griner's release if the U.S. had insisted on trying to get Paul Whelan out, and with the prior notification this time, unlike last spring when there was another false start, with the prior notification to the Whelan family that this was going to happen. And they were, again, going to be disappointed. Uh, David Whelan said that that made a big difference. He was able to prepare his parents, who were 85 and 83 years old, but that Whelan will not be coming home for Christmas, but happily, Brittany Griner is. It's an incredibly thoughtful statement mm -hmm. from David Whelan, yes, and he indeed. does express his joy and relief for, for Brittany Griner, but he calls it a catastrophe mm -hmm. for his brother. Let's talk about Brittany Griner. We don't want to miss the moment here, Andrea. She yeah. has been freed after nearly 10 months. Can you talk about about the type of condition she may have been kept yeah. in. I, I know at the very end there, she was sent to a notorious penal colony in Russia. No, exactly. At the beginning of November, after her appeal was lost, she was taken from the detention jail, where she had been at least more accessible to occasional visits from U.S. Embassy officials, and taken to this penal colony, and the conditions, we understand, were terrible. Uh, that the, the gruel that they were fed, not nutritious, uh, no hot water, one bathroom for as many as 80 women prisoners, uh, very little exercise, and this woman is six foot nine years old, had already been kept in a cell that was way too small for her. She's missed, you know, an entire season, 10 months of physical fitness and of conditioning and of, of her career at the peak of an athlete's life and career. So she has suffered immeasurable loss. 
this. We're just hoping when she gets to that medical facility in San Antonio that the, the wonderful doctors who have taken care of all of our service members for so many years of conflicts, that they will know exactly what to do about PTSD, about whatever else she may be suffering from, and about getting her back in shape, mm -hmm. and that that's mm -hmm. the best best option. And it is, of course, near nearer to Phoenix than the U.S. than, than uh, being in Washington at Walter Reed yeah. or another facility. San Antonio is supposed to be a great facility. And it's worth kind of underscoring why she was arrested in the first place. They originally said that she was charged with smuggling drugs, and she was contending that she just had some cannabis oil that she had medical permission to use for some of her ailments. So that was the genesis of why. In the context, at, at the very moment yeah. that right. Russia was launching its war in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So many people, Andrea, right. feel she was swept up in geopolitics. Mm -hmm. no, absolutely. It was February 17th when they were about to launch the war on February 24th. And the fact is it was less than a gram. There was no testimony, and I watched all of the trial, no testimony in any of these events that it was more than, you know, less than a gram of cannabis oil medically prescribed by the physicians, the sports doctors in, in Phoenix. So uh, there's no question that she was not doing anything uh, that would warrant this. And, in any case, even if there weren't, a, if she weren't being held hostage geopolitically, there's no excuse at all. And it's um, also, Andrea, worth noting, this is exactly what she said when she was in trial. Um, I never meant to hurt anybody. I never meant to put in jeopardy the Russian population. This is what she had to say after the conviction. I've never meant to break laws here. I made an honest mistake. I mean, that's what she contended. We have Peter Alexander. Who's Peter's at the at White, the White House. House. And yeah. I, I want to talk about the Whelan family because mm -hmm. the statement, which I said, is quite lengthy and very nuanced, uh, very generous, of course, mm -hmm. to Brittany Griner, but also it's tough on, on the administration, past and mm -hmm. present, saying that, that the family wishes it had been more assertive to get Paul's release. Does that work continue, or is this just a dead end? Russia saying, mm -hmm. we want you to give us a spy. The U.S. saying, we don't have any spies, and that's the end of it? Well, the U.S. work continues, as the president himself indicated in his remarks earlier today. But as you see, they are facing a brick wall uh, in terms of the Russian Federation right now, their unwillingness to turn over Paul Whelan, who you'll remember was picked up back in 2018. He is a U.S. businessman, but notably he is a former U.S. Marine. And it's on that basis that Russia has been making its case, the U.S. says wrongfully, that he was there serving as a U.S. spy. The U.S. has repeatedly denied that. We are now hearing um, from some of the officials here as this news is breaking. They are saying this is a big day. It is a great day, they say, but it would sure be a lot better in the words of one of these officials if Paul was coming home as well. So that's what makes this uh, particularly bittersweet right now. And we should note, that, I mean, this is this is the president ultimately who signed off on this. But Victor Boot, uh, he is a significant prisoner that the U.S. had in custody. As we have said, a convicted arms dealer, um, the merchant of death, Savannah, as you noted earlier, there were conversations in the back and forth that took place over the course of the last several months where the Russians appear to have expressed interest into one of their citizens who uh, was an assassin who was being held in Germany by the German government. But that was a non-starter in the course of the back and forth. But as Andrea indicated at the end of the day, when the Russians said they would give up Brittany Griner and Brittany Griner, the president of the United States made the decision to go with it. All right. Peter, thank you very much. Uh, this has been an NBC News special report covering the release of Brittany Griner. And we've learned this morning she has been traded, as Peter mentioned, for mm -hmm. a notorious Russian arms dealer who had been convicted and served about three quarters of his sentence, Victor Boot. That trade has secured her release. She is en route to San Antonio, where we understand she'll be receiving medical treatment. And it was nice to see her wife, Sherelle, up there at the podium saying that at this moment, although there's a, a, still a lot going on, she's going to take this moment to pause and smile. So it's important to mark the moment what has happened today. Absolutely. A lot of work behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Some false starts that we had seen earlier reports that there would be a prisoner swap. It did not pan mm -hmm. out. They continued to work on it. These images coming to us from mm -hmm. the White House from inside the Oval Office this morning. We'll continue to keep a close eye on it. We'll bring you any updates. More coverage on NBC Nightly News and on NBC News Now. For now, most will go back to today.
And we are continuing our breaking news coverage of Brittany Griner's release. We heard just moments ago from Brittany's wife, Sherelle, who said that today my family is whole, but also recognizing so many other families are not, including the family of Paul Whelan, and saying that they are committed to helping Paul and other families that they feel are being held unjustly. Um, similarly, we have a statement from the Whelan family, from David Whelan, in fact, saying he is so glad that Brittany Griner is headed home, that Biden made the right decision, and he does not begrudge grudge Miss Griner for her freedom, but that this is a catastrophe for his brother, that he can't imagine what it's going to be like when he does learn that news, likely from Russian media. But we did just hear from the president. We know now that Brittany Griner is headed to San Antonio, where she will receive medical treatment and be reunited with her wife, Sherelle. We're going to bring in NBC News correspondent Molly Hunter, who is standing by on this breaking story for us and covering it all. We have a lot of reaction here. Now, Molly, just first, your reaction to what we just heard from President Biden, as well as this new information that we have. Yeah, I, I think what we just heard from President Biden was uh, was joyful. Of course, uh, the screen that we saw him on, of course, you had Sherelle uh, Griner right behind him and Vice President Kamala Harris right behind him. Uh, and he was uh, incredibly excited. Um, he was uh, grateful. He thanked uh, the tireless uh, U.S. team for their intense negotiations. Um, but he was very clear that they were continuing to work for Paul Whelan's release. He said uh, that we have not forgotten about Paul Whelan. Sadly, for totally illegitimate reasons, Russia is treating Paul's case differently than Britney's. And then he handed the microphone over uh, to Sherelle. And we did hear uh, from a very composed, incredibly composed, really extraordinary uh, few words from Sherelle. She thanked U.S. officials, including the senior U.S. officials in the room, of course, and she thanked her family. And then she really uh, paid tribute again to Paul Whelan's family. She talked about what a joyful, of course, day. As you just said, Savannah, her family is whole. She was very aware that other families were not. And she said she would be happy to speak for BG, for Brittany Griner, of course, at this moment. And she said, BG and I will remain committed to the work of getting every American home, including Paul, whose family is in our hearts today. Uh, you also mentioned that statement from Paul's brother, David. And again, it did not begrudge, it did not resent that uh, Brittany Griner was home. It was incredibly gracious. He says, I am so glad that Brittany Griner is on her way home. Uh, as the family member of a Russian hostage, I can literally only imagine the joy. And then he spoke about how uh, gut-wrenchingly disappointing it is for his family, of course, and devastating, of course, when his brother actually finds that out. Uh, he says that this time the U.S. government did let them know in advance that Paul would be left behind, unlike last April when they left mm. him. Uh, so that is clearly a positive development. Uh, but he says at the end, and this is what really struck me, and it's a, it's a fairly long statement, he says, and now what? How do you continue to survive day after day when you know that your government has failed twice to free you from a foreign prison? I can't imagine he retains any hope. Mm -hmm. uh, so, guys, a lot of focus on Paul Whelan's family today and a lot of joy uh, in Sherelle Griner's face today. Yeah, uh, president saying that there were painstaking and intense negotiations over the last several months. We've been hearing about these negotiations really since this summer, saying that he spoke yeah. to Brittany Griner. She's in good spirits, relieved to be coming home, describing that she showed grit and dignity throughout this entire process, that she represents the best of America and that she did not ask for special treatment. And of course, what we keep hearing is a family being made whole. Those were the words from Sherelle. Yeah, absolutely. And also referencing that letter that she wrote and said, please don't forget about me. Obviously, this now comes to fruition today with her coming home and being reunited with her family in Texas, where she will land shortly. Molly Hunter, thank you so much for your help on this coverage this morning. And that does it for this hour of Morning News Now. But the news, of course, continues right now. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.